JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for February the 18th. I am Harald Ambos Pissuros, Senior Market Analyst here at JFD and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar continued to uh, trading higher against the majority of the other G10 currencies on Wednesday and during the Asian morning Thursday. It gained the most versus CHF, the Euro and NOC in that order, while it was found virtually unchanged against the Aussie and the Japanese Yen. Now, the strengthening of the US dollar and the Japanese Yen suggests uh, that uh, markets continue trading in a risk-off manner yesterday and today in Asia. However, the weakening of the Swiss franc and the strengthening of the Aussie point, uh, point otherwise. Thus, in order to get a clearer picture with regards to the broader market sentiment, we prefer to turn our gaze to the equity world. Here, major EU indices uh, were a sea of red, while in the US Nasdaq fell 0.58%. The S&P 500 finished virtually unchanged, while the Dow Jones gained 0.29%. In Asia, sentiment was soft again with Japan's Nikkei 225, Hong Kong's Hang Seng and South Korea's KOSPI falling 0.19, 1.70 and 1.50% respectively. The exception was China's Shanghai Composite which gained 0.55% uh, on its uh, first trading day after the, after the Lunar New Year celebrations. Equities continue to pull back, perhaps as rising inflation expectations continue to push uh, bond yields higher, with the benchmark 10-year US Treasury yield hitting its highest in a year yesterday. This means that uh, the reflation trade could prove to be positive for equities, but only to the point where the rise in bond yields is considered too fast, which could raise speculation over monetary policy tapering by major central banks. However, we believe that it is too early for something like that and the minutes from the latest FOMC meeting add credence to our view. Yes, officials noted that uh, PCE prices, uh, their favorite inflation metric, were projected to move uh, briefly above 2% in the second uh, quarter of 2021, but this would prove uh, temp to be temporary and eventually inflation is expected to finish the year just uh, below 2%. Inflation was projected to moderate over uh, to moderate overshoot 2% uh, for some time in the years beyond 2020, uh, 2023, but with uh, monetary policy assumed to remain accommodative. Thus, with no signs of uh, tapering anytime soon, we believe that equities uh, have the potential to, re to rebound again and save heavens to come under renewed selling interest. Today, the item on the agenda which could attract some special attention may be the minutes from the latest ECB policy gathering. Despite the lockdown measures around the Eurozone, at the press conference following that decision, President Lagarde said that the downside risks to the economic outlook are now less pronounced, making investors skeptical over further easing, although the bank repeated once again that it stands ready to adjust all of its instruments as appropriate. Therefore, we will scan the minutes to see whether Lagarde's view is shared among other officials as well, and whether indeed the chances for more easing have lessened for now. Something like that may benefit somewhat the euro. Now, as uh, for the rest of uh, today's events, the US building permits and housing starts for January are coming out, and they are both expected to have declined somewhat from their December readings. We also get the initial jobless claims for, for, uh, for last week, with the forecast pointing to a small decline 
to 765,000 from 793,000 the week before. With regards to the energy market, we get the Energy Information Administration report on crude oil inventories for last week with the forecast pointing to a 2.429 million uh, barrels decline following a 6.644 million uh, fall the week before. Yesterday, the American Petroleum Institute reported a 5.800 million barrel slide and thus we would consider the risks surrounding the Energy Information Administration forecast as tilted uh, to the downside. Combined with the ongoing deep freeze in Texas, this is likely to boost oil prices even further. Tonight, during the Asian Morning Friday, Japan's national CPIs for January are due to be released. There is no forecast available for the headline rate, uh, while the core one is anticipated to have risen to, zero, to minus 0.7% year over year from minus 1%. As uh, for the speakers, we have four on today's schedule, and those are Atlanta Fed President Rafael Bostic, Fed Board Governor Le Lyle Brainard, Brainard, Bank of England MPC member uh, Michael Sanders, and the ECB Executive Board member Isabel Schnabel. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much uh, for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the Weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 8 o'clock a.m. GMT. You can find the link in the description below. So goodbye, have a great day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.